come together and to learn about your word. I pray for your Holy Spirit to to speak through me, that you will open our ears, open our eyes to see the truth, and help us, Father, come together, bless this discussion, and help us, O God, get closer to you through your word. We thank you, and that you'll guide us in your name. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen. So, we're going to continue in this series, right, of spiritual warfare, that if you make the decision to follow Christ, you automatically become an enemy of who? Of Satan and his demons, okay? Now, today's topic, we're going to be very, very serious. We're going to go <laughs> into depth tonight, okay? To the point that some of us are going to be uncomfortable, okay? And we're going to talk about a topic that is going to be, it's going to shake some heads, it's going to make us uncomfortable. But believe it or not, it's something that the church has to, has to talk about. Because if we don't talk about it, we leave it out for the world to define it. So it's so important for us to talk about this. Now, question. What is another way, guys? We see so many ways that the enemy has tried to destroy Gen Z, right? So many ways that the enemy wants to destroy this young generation, especially, especially with religion dying down in the younger generations. But what are other ways that we see the enemy attacking Gen Z? Last week we talked about what? Witchcraft, okay? <clears throat> you say so, right? Interesting. What else? Through music, right? That's a good one. Social media, alcohol, addictions. Yeah. What else? What else do we see it? What's that? Political stuff, yeah. What else? Do we see the enemy attacking the younger generation specifically? Social media. In what way? TikTok. Now, on, all over social media, there is one thing that brings so much perversion. What is that? What would you say? I thought you said corn. What did you say? Corn. <laughs> yeah. It's pornography. Now, in the area, when it comes about sex, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about <laughs> sex. Everyone say sex. sex. We're going to cover three questions. What does the Bible say about it? Why is it important? Why is it so important for the church, for the church to talk about it? And how do we achieve, achieve victory on this area? Now, guys, if the church doesn't talk about this, we leave it open for the world to define what it is. And you know, you all know how messed up it is to that, okay? You don't have to be religious to even know this. How messed up. So much sexual perversion that we see in our society, entering our schools, entering our culture. Y'all see it, okay? So it's so important for every single one of us to talk about what does the Bible say about this and what's the purpose and why God created it, all right? Now, God created sex, okay? God created sex, and he made it good. He made it good. Y'all know that? God created sex. I know sometimes in the church we think, this is, uh, we think this is taboo and this is something that shouldn't be talked as much, but in, our, in, in reality, God created it. Yeah, guys, how do, how do people, how were people made? How, where did we come from? Okay. Did we, did we just like pop out in the middle of the air? No. A bird came? Funny story, a bird came. Okay. That's what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 it says this. Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will be one flesh. Now, this is talking about marriage. So, when people okay, come together in marriage and they have sex, they literally become one. One. They become one flesh. Okay? So, when you have sex with someone, you're not only connecting with them physically, guys, okay? 
It's not just a physical connection. It's actually emotional, psychological, spiritual. Okay? Now, I'm, there's so many people that take this lightly and they don't believe it. Okay? There's so many comments. It's just a hookup. Okay? It's just a one night stand. I'm just gonna hit and quit. All right? Hey, I'm just gonna test drive. All right? See if it's good. You know what I'm saying? Hey. There's, 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 there's um, all these comments that people say in our younger generation about this, okay, what about sex? And they take it so lightly that it's like nothing serious, okay, it's just sex. But in reality, I'm going to give you guys two options that will help you see that sex is not just a physical act, okay? Option A and option B, okay? What's worse? This is serious. What's worse? Someone being abused sexually and going through rape or someone that's getting physically jumped. They're both bad, but which one is worse? Option A. Option A, why? That's like trauma of friends. Exactly, like because, of because sex is not just a physical thing, guys. It's, sex goes emotional, okay? It's something mental, psychological that goes, something that even our brains can't comprehend. It goes even more deeper than just a physical intimacy. It goes where two people are being, like, bind together. They're becoming one flesh, okay? So this is why sex is not just a physical thing. It's so serious that the Bible makes it very clear. It makes it very clear. Now, God created sex for the husband and wife to become one flesh, okay? For them to be one, but also to what, man? To make babies. Okay, to make babies. I don't know if you guys know, but that's what makes babies, all right? Oh you guys didn't know that? You guys know it now. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God has said to them, be fruitful and multiply. What is, is he saying go and plant bananas? No, man. He's saying go and have the goodies, all right? And that's procreate and create other babies, all right? And Adam was like, I bet. He's going to go and, and have sex with his wife. All right, that's his wife. That's the commandment that God said, go and have sex with your wife and procreate, okay? That is two reasons. To sex is for the wife and the husband, but also to make babies, to make babies. Now, this is what the Bible says. Let's go to, if you guys are Bibles, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do you guys got it? Yes. All right. It says this. We're going to start reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. It says this. Do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot and prostitute is one with her in the body? Because it is said, the two will be one flesh. Now, this is in the New Testament. This is repeating exactly what we read from the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. Because it is said, the two will be one flesh, but he who is united to the Lord is one with him in spirit. Verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins that a person commits are outside of the body, but the one who sins sexually sins against his own body. Verse 19, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not yours. Verse 20, for the price you bought, you were bought. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So you see right here, guys, that when we come to Christ, okay, when we give our lives to Christ, we no longer own ourselves. It is someone else. It is the Holy Spirit living in us. That is why we cannot be living in sexual immorality anymore. This is why we can't be hooking up anymore. This is why we can't be living in pornography. This is why we can't be doing all these other perversions, sexual perversion stuff. Because when we come to Christ, now it's no longer me living for me. Now, you and I, we're living for Christ. Now, the Bible makes it very clear right here. Whoever joins themselves with the prostitute, this is going to give an example, a prostitute, a woman or a man, they become what? One. They become one in the spirit. Okay? Oh. So now, when we talk about sexual immorality, this is the definition. Any sexual act outside of marriage that is not between a man and a woman. Now, there's a lot of things when it comes to sexual morality. Fornication, right? Sex before marriage. Homosexuality, masturbation, 
Adultery. Well, adultery is when they cheat on their husband or wife. Okay? Bestiality, that's sex with animals. Kids or not, that's a real thing. People have sex with animals and with dogs. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, pornography, lesbianism, and transgenderism. Okay? All of that is sexual immorality. That is not under the context between a man and a woman in marriage. All right? And Jesus makes that very clear when he talks about sexual morality. And today, we're just going to cover three areas. We're going to cover three areas. That is the porn, masturbation, fornication, adultery, and homosexuality. Okay? Those three big areas we're going to cover to that. Now, we're going to have to be honest with ourselves, okay? If in one of these areas that we struggle, okay, or if it's a battle, we have to be an honest with God, honest with each other, so that we find freedom, okay? The Bible says this, Proverbs 28, 13, But the one who hides his sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses it and renounces it obtains mercy. So you have to be honest with yourself if this, when it comes to pornography, when it comes to these other areas, if that's actually an actual struggle. You have to confess it and renounce it, meaning quitting it, okay? And we're going to talk about how to do that, okay? Now, in this church, okay, specifically in our youth group, we will not hate the sinner, nor we condemn anyone, nor we shame, nor we guilt trip, no. In this we will preach you the truth in love and also lead us. That will lead us to freedom. That will lead us to restoration, especially when it comes to our sexuality. All right? There's other groups that they will shame and they will guilt and they will just destroy the person. But in this, we, wouldn't want, we want to lead the person to freedom and to healing. Okay? Now, when it comes to pornography, okay, let's be real honest with each other. All of us have encountered it. Do not lie to me. One way or another. Yes or no? Yes. Okay? Whether that be through social media, whether that be through the websites. Let me tell you, man. If, if, you, if you're... I'm going to talk to y'all right now. I'm going to talk to everyone now. If, if I find out that you're in OnlyFans and you're asking for topics, nah, man, there's some... There's some weird stuff that pe guys ask for pictures, man. Honestly, I don't know. I don't want to ask you ladies, but some of the stuff that got, men ask, like, come on. That's just, that's just weird. Okay, so in one way or another, all of us have encountered pornography, whether that be through the actual, you know, the heavy core stuff, or soft porn, or thirst traps all over social media, okay? We've all encountered this kind of stuff in one way or another. Pornography now, you know, before, before in the old times, before the internet, you had to go and look for pornography. You had to go and like, you know, buy the magazines, rent it out in the movies. Now it finds you, okay? Now it finds us. I kid you not, guys, pornography found me when I was nine years old, okay? When I was nine years old. And I remember the first time, I remember the first time I encountered it, I was like, I was like, I don't know what I'm watching. I was like nine years old and my innocence was stripped away. I was like, what am I watching? And my innocence was stripped away. All right? And I kid you not, since then, that's, that was a hook. That was a hook that the enemy got me. Okay? And then I struggled it for more than 10 years. More than 10 years. And now I'm a living witness to say that I've been free from it for years. This is something real that I know some of you guys are going through that right now, okay? And let me tell you, there is victory in this area from pornography and from lust. But we have to be real with each other, okay? Now, behind pornography, there is a demonic spirit. There is a demonic spirit behind this. And this is the spirit of Jezebel, a spirit of Jezebel that we see today in our world, especially in our social media, especially where so many people are just narcissists, full of themselves. Come on, let's be real, yes or no? Especially with the influencer um, era with, with everyone in LA, everyone trying to be, make it big. Everyone's like, what's up? Oh. Um, and then this spirit of Jezebel, raise your hand if you've ever heard of this, spirit of Jezebel. Okay? Some of you guys got delivered through this, some of you guys didn't. Now the spirit of Jezebel, we see it in the story of this, uh, the prophet Elijah, 
Okay, this is in the Old Testament when she was the queen of Israel, but she was evil. She would lead God's people, Israel, to worship other gods and to commit fornication and just do horrible stuff. So then God raised a leader named Elijah, and Elijah confronted this evil woman. But here's the thing. There was a demonic spirit behind this woman, okay, that the Bible talks about in the end times in the book of Revelations. Okay, that's the last book in the Bible. It mentions this woman that it will attack a lot of men, men of God. And now we see that in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 20. It says this, But I have against thee thou that permitted that woman Jezebel. Okay, is this actually talking about the actual woman Jezebel? No, it's talking about the demonic spirit behind Jezebel. She who calls herself a prophetess and she teaches and leads astray my servants to commit fornication. Fornication. Now, when we look at the word fornication, all right, when it's that's translated into its original Greek, the New Testament was written in one language, Greek. When fornication is translated, it's translated to pornea, okay? Now, pornea in Greek, this is where we get the word in English, pornography, okay? Now, check this out, check this out. The book of Revelations was written 2,000 years ago. This is when there was no Wi-Fi. This was when there was no electricity. This is when there was like literally no YouTube, no social media, nothing like that, right? And there's this dude, the one that wrote this, this, this book, John, was in a, in a little island. God gave him a revelation that in the end times, this spirit was going to destroy a lot of men and a lot of women. And that is through pornography. That is facts right there, bro. <laughs> Dude, like it's like this thing was this thing was written two thousand years ago, and it's talking about that in the end times, so many servants of God were gonna be destroyed by this. And I kid you not, almost not all men, but literally almost all of them are addicted. Okay.